In this video, I'm going to explore the uses of smart polymers in medicine. Firstly, we must ask the question, what is a polymer? A polymer is a chain made up of many monomers. The process of linking all these individual units is called polymerization. This polymer can be made of lots of units of the same monomer or a combination of different monomers. Our second question then is what is so smart about smart polymers? These materials are ones which change and respond to an external stimulus, meaning their physical properties can change due to a change in temperature or pH, for example. What makes these polymers really clever is that a tiny change in environment can cause a really big change in their structure and properties. We'll see an example later on of how a tiny change in temperature can cause this polymer, poly n isopropyl acrylamide, to change its properties. These big changes in response to small stimuli are what make smart polymers so useful in medicine. There are different ways we can classify these smart polymers, but the method I will focus on here is classifying them depending on what stimuli they respond to. Our first category is physical stimuli, such as temperature and light. Secondly, we have polymers which respond to chemical stimulus, like a change in pH or redox reactions. And finally, there are polymers which respond to a biological stimulus, such as enzymes and biomolecules like lipids and proteins. One smart polymer I would like to focus on today is poly N isopropyl acrylamide. As we saw earlier, this polymer changes in response to temperature. An important temperature in this reaction is something known as the lower critical solution temperature, or LCST. For poly N isopropyl acrylamide, this temperature is around 32 degrees C. If the polymer is below this temperature, we see a structure like that on the left hand side where water molecules form hydrogen bonds within the polymer. In this side of the reaction, the polymer is hydrophilic, meaning it likes water and is attracted to it through these hydrogen bonds. If we then heat our polymer, taking the temperature above the LCST, we see these water molecules are then expelled from the structure. The hydrogen bonds we just saw no longer exist. Instead, the polymer has made internal hydrogen bonds, as shown. This means the water is no longer attracted to the structure, and so our polymer has become hydrophobic. These property changes can occur over a temperature change as little as just one degree Celsius, making it a very smart polymer. So it's fascinating learning about how poly N isopropyl acrylamide can respond to temperature. But why is this useful in medicine? One application of this polymer is in a medical dressing, the kind used to dress burn wounds or skin damage in general. This recently designed dressing is made up of three layers, the middle layer being poly N isopropyl acrylamide. The bottom layer is the one that sits directly on the wound site and forms a sort of artificial skin, allowing the wound to heal. The poly N isopropyl acrylamide holds this bottom layer together with the top layer, which is made up of polypropylene, another polymer. This final layer is there to prevent infection and allow for drainage. Now, if we think back to what we just learnt about the LCST of poly N isopropyl acrylamide, we'll remember that above 32 degrees Celsius, it was hydrophobic and repelled water. When a wound is in an inflamed state, meaning it's not yet healed, the skin temperature will be around 37 degrees C. At this temperature, the hydrophobic poly N isopropyl acrylamide acts as, a, as an adhesive and binds the two layers together. Once the wound has healed sufficiently, the skin temperature returns to around 31 degrees Celsius, which is below the LCST. Here, the poly N isopropyl acrylamide is hydrophilic, and therefore soluble, meaning it loses its adhesive properties and the upper layer can be peeled away from the bottom, 
leaving behind a skin graft of sorts. This could be revolutionary for treating burn victims and providing a three-layer skin graft, which will indicate itself when it's ready to be removed. Polyen isopropyl acrylamide has other potential uses in medicine too. For example, in providing in situ drug delivery due to its reversible gel-like properties. This means the polymer can change from a solution to a gel and vice versa, making it useful for carrying a drug which will be soluble in one form and not the other. However, there are still some challenges to overcome for the use of polyen isopropyl acrylamide. These include the fact that the quaternary ammonium in the polymer means it has a certain level of cytotoxicity, hence the polyen isopropyl acrylamide layer was not the one directly on the skin in our burn dressing. Polyen isopropyl acrylamide is also non-biodegradable, and with our planet facing such huge plastic pollution, this alone could be a valid reason not to use it. Furthermore, polyen isopropyl acrylamide has the ability to activate platelets in the body, which could lead to a higher risk of blood clots. So, there is work to be done in order to refine the properties of polyen isopropyl acrylamide in order to make it safe and sustainable for use. But it shows real promise in the medical field and is just one example of the incredible world of smart polymers. <laughs>